Good morning. Let's confess the Word of God together. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is Lord over my family. Jesus is Lord over my life. Jesus is Lord over my nation. And Jesus is Lord of all. Today, I hear the voice of the Spirit and the voice of a stranger I do not follow because I do not know the voice of the stranger. My ears are open because he opens my ears to hear as the learned. And I am a doer of the word and not a hearer only. I do not deceive myself. So therefore I do the word of God. I just had a thought that reminded me of something in, as I was saying that, that we are doers of the word and not hearers only. Uh, for the weekend, I had uh, my two youngest grandchildren here, not great grandchildren, but two youngest grandchildren, which is uh, Alex and Valentine. Alex is 13, Valentine's 11. And um, so there was something that I was teaching actually each one of them. And so I said, now you do it because it's in the doing of it that you learn how to do it. And um, so I got to thinking about how even in driving a car, you can tell someone how to drive, but they really learn when they get in the car and drive themselves. And when I was 15 years old, my mother would let me drive to a close city on Sunday because there wasn't any traffic. Of course, that was years ago. And um, <clears throat> she would teach me, but as I did it, then I learned how to do it and it became a part of me. So it's the same way with the Word of God. As you do the Word, whatever you see in the Word, just do it. If it says tithe, bring all the tithe into the storehouse, do it. If it says love your neighbor as yourself, do it. Whatever it says do, do it and let that Word empower you to do it. But then, and and this part of it is so important of confessing the Word of God confessing who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, what God is to you, confessing the promises of the Word of God, because with the heart man believes unto righteousness, but with your mouth confession is made unto your salvation, your deliverance, your freedom, uh, every part of your salvation. So say this again, say, Father, I thank you that by faith I am a doer of the word and not a hearer only in Jesus' name. And you help me to do the word. You know, he is our helper. We don't have to do this on our own. Well, for the next few days, the Holy Spirit has instructed me to teach on if we can um, expect God to answer us to answer our prayers on time, to be there when we call on Him. What is God's time frame concerning answering our prayers? And the only way we can find this is through the Word of God, what He did, even in the Old Testament, what He said, and what Jesus said and did. Because He said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. So whatever we see that Jesus did or that God did, then that's who he is to us. He never changes from the beginning to the end. He said, I am the Alpha and the Omega. That's the beginning and the end. And so as we learn this and renew our minds to it, it will empower you to receive from God well, I'm kind of giving it away, but it will empower you to receive from Him immediately. And we're going to learn that. But right now, we're reviewing because the Word of God says in Colossians 1 that I pray that you are filled with the knowledge of His will 
in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. And then in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15, he said, Be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. So right now we are reviewing um, the prayer promises, what Jesus said about prayer, so that you will know that it is the will of God to answer your prayers, first of all. A lot of people don't even know that. And until you know that, I'm not talking about think about it. I'm talking about know that in your mind and in your heart, and you have established that thought process and allowed that word to take dominance in your thought processes of, well, I'll pray for this and God will do it. Because until you take that word and make it yours, then it is um, no different than the person that doesn't, has never heard it. So you have to own it. You have to make this word yours. I have a niece that um, she was in the Miss Alabama pageant, and for her talent, she played a very difficult piece on the piano. And as she played, I thought, she owns that. She has mastered it. She owns it. And, I mean, she was in total control of it. Well, that's the way we have got to own the promises of God. They have got to be so, so in you, in your mind, and in your heart that you actually own them. They become yours. So I gave you some promises yesterday, and I'm going to give you some more today. John 16, verse 23 through 27, Jesus said, And in that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will, say will, he will give it you. Say it this way, say whatever I ask the Father in Jesus' name, he will give it to me. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you shall receive, that your joy may be full. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs. But the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. And that's what he's doing for us right now. At that day you shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you, that I will pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came out from God. The Father himself loves you. So he said, I, I just love this. He says, ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. He says, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Now take those today and tomorrow and the next day and meditate on them and declare them about yourself, about the Father, what he is to you. Whatever I ask the Father in Jesus' name, he will give it to me. And um, then in Matthew 7, 7, which of course you know is one of my favorite because it's just so simple. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asks receives, and every one that seeks finds, and every one that knocks, it is opened unto him. So Jesus is telling us, he had just spent some time expounding on the Father that um, the Father feeds the birds. How much more valuable are you than the birds? And the Father clothes a lily of the field, which he clothes the grass of the field, 
with a beautiful lily, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, and that's clothes greater than Solomon in all of his wealth and splendor. How much more would he clothe you? He said, O ye of little faith. So he had just revealed the Father to us from his desire to provide for, greatly provide for his children. Of course, the father of the universe, you know, how is he going to provide for you with the abundant supply of the best of everything? He's lavish. But then, just a few verses later, he says, So ask, and it shall be given unto you. So the only prerequisite right here is to ask. And then he says, if you, if you have, uh, as a father, have a son and come ask for bread, will he give him a stone or a rock? Or if he come in and ask for a fish, will you give him a snake? Listen, just take this for what it says. Don't try to spiritualize it and come up with some, this was a type and shadow. No, he's just literally saying, if your child comes in, and ask you for a sandwich or ask you, says, Mom, I'm hungry. We, may I have a sandwich, please? You're not going to say, here's a snake. You're not going to give him something that's harmful to him. And then he said, you're going to do what? You're going to give him something to eat. You're going to fix him something. You're going to make sure that he has something to eat. And even this weekend, as my grandchildren were here, I planned the meals so that uh, they would have things they enjoyed, good nourishing meals for them, but things that they enjoyed. And then even in between, I had things that they enjoyed to snack on. And they would ask, Grandma, may I have some ice cream? Yes, help yourself. And um, so I laid it out for them and they partook. So then he comes on down and says, If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? How much more will your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to you? that ask him. What is the prerequisite? Simply to ask. And you know, he wants you to ask big so that he can show himself strong to you. So ask, ask and believe big that your joy may be full. And of course he gets all the glory and all the praise for it because he is the one that performs his word for us. And that's what David said. He said, I will cry unto the Lord who performs all things for me. So when you pray and you get an answer, then don't let the enemy say, oh, that would have happened anyway. No, it wouldn't have. No, mm -mm. It, was, it happened because you asked and you believed God for that to happen to you. And now you have a... Um, a treasure of faith precedence, of prayer precedence. And I encourage you to keep a journal of them. I believe it was Andrew Murray that it was said about that he had a journal and he would write down his prayer and then he would write down when it was answered. Well, I believe that's a good idea for you and me to do that. And then we can just give testimony to the great goodness of our Father. Well, remember all day, Jesus is Lord. Thank God for the truth of his word. Take it, put it in your mouth and in your mind, and own it. Have a blessed day. The word works. <laughs>